Hey, what's going on guys? It's your boy, NerdModon, and welcome to our first episode where I'm going to be taking a user submitted loadout and trying to perform up to snuff, especially when it comes down to the circumstances that align. So of course, with that said, let's kind of jump into the general information about what this loadout is, and then of course transfer into more of the in-depth information and give you guys an opinion, especially when it comes down to if this weapon is going to be usable in these circumstances, or if it's deterred and held back by the attachments that are listed on the weapon. So for the primary weapon, we're going to be using the M416 with the Coyote Red Dot, Laser, Muzzle Brake, Folding Grip, and Standard Camouflage. For the secondary, we're going to be using the Desert Eagle with the Mini RDS, Laser, and Standard Camouflage as well. And then of course for Gadget 1 and 2, we're going to be using the Defibrillator and the Medical Kit. And last but not least, for our Grenade Type, we're going to be using the Flashbang, which is something that I don't have a ton of experience with for the most part, especially when it comes down to me throwing them. However, it seems like with the recent update, the Flashbangs are very very effective at blinding your teammates and the enemy team. So of course, pulling up the Synthic stats for the M416, you'll quickly realize that the weapon is actually pretty good when it comes down to the statistics. It does have a 750 rounds per minute, which is actually on the higher end side, especially when it comes down to the rate of fire. Now alongside that information, the M416 does have a 600 meters per second velocity. Now all this really means is how much you have to compensate for long range or moving targets. So of course, the higher this number, the less compensation you have to do as a player. Now of course, taking a look at the damage model, pretty much all of the assault rifles pretty much stay within the 24.5 maximum damage up until 12.5 meters. However, the minimum damage that this weapon can do is 18, and that is achieved all the way out at 60 meters. So, of course, most of the engagements for this weapon are somewhere between medium and long range for the most part, and it's pretty easy to compensate for recoil as well as being accurate at those distances. Now, with that said, taking a look at the recoil pattern, considering that that's a pretty potent thing, especially when it comes down to utilizing a weapon on the battlefield and understanding how it's going to work, especially when it comes down to the engagements you're trying to use it in. Now the M416 does have a left pole of .12 as well as a right pole of .28. Now this information is allowing us to understand that this particular weapon is going to be drifting more to the right than it is to the left. Now of course alongside that information you also have the vertical recoil pulling upward at .32 which is a little bit heavier than a lot of the other weapons. Of course there are weapons that do have a much smaller number compared to this as well as there are weapons that are a lot higher than this. So when it comes down to it, this information allows us to know that the weapon will be pulling up and to the right so easily you can compensate for this by pulling down and to the left to try to keep your crosshair centered in the screen allowing you to be the most accurate that you can be especially at those distances. And finally, the last thing to kind of discuss really quick is that the reload speeds on the M416 are much faster compared to some of the other rifles in this category. Knowing that the M416 allows you to be aggressive, this also allows you to plan ahead especially when it comes down to playing a certain game mode or allowing yourself to push onto an objective with one or two teammates and hopefully taking the objective by itself. In my personal opinion, this is really one of the redeeming qualities about the M416 is because it allows you to reload quickly and then push onto objectives and kill a lot of players at the same expense. So of course with the internals of the weapon kind of discussed, especially when it comes down to the damage model and how the weapon is supposed to be performing, especially at a base level, let's kind of take a look at the attachments that have been listed for this weapon to see if they benefit the weapon or if they deter and take away from the overall performance. So taking a look at the laser sight, the muzzle breaker, and the folding grip, these are definitely things that I struggled with personally because I don't have a ton of experience with them in the first place. So of course, starting things off on the laser sight, this is definitely an attachment that I wouldn't recommend, especially for bigger maps, especially considering that it does give away your position while on the move. It is also worth noting that the laser sight is also able to be seen through smoke or also large particle effects, especially through like explosions and stuff like that that leave a lasting impact on the battlefield. Now, of course, the laser sight is not inherently bad by any means. If you're somebody that really finds yourself hip firing and then going ADS, this can definitely be a very beneficial attachment to use. However, I feel like for me personally, it didn't really allow me to be as successful because I was giving away my position while trying to get a flank on, and that overall just kind of took away from the experience for me and really made it a lot more difficult than it needed to be. Now, transferring over to the muzzle breaker, this is an attachment that I have actually never used in Battlefield. I've never really needed to use it, considering that I'm fairly confident in my ability to compensate for recoil. 
This attachment really took me by storm considering that I've never really had to use it in the past and I quickly found myself not being as accurate and compensating too much which ultimately took away from my ability to hit the opposition. It is also worth noting that since the most recent update that drastically changed Battlefield Vanilla version, this is an attachment that I would never really recommend by itself considering that since that update a lot of the attachments have had a huge penalty added to them especially when it comes down to their recenter rate. So even doing single shot or even burst fire, you'll quickly find that your accuracy at medium to long range is a lot less accurate than it would be if you just held down the mouse button and just tried to compensate for the recoil by itself. So of course, it's really negative either way you look at it, and it kind of takes away from the M416's potential. And finally, taking a look at the folding grip. Now this is an attachment that by itself doesn't seem too bad, but of course, like I said in the previous attachment listing, there has been a significant decrease in performance to really all of the underbarrels as well. So of course this attachment by looking at it just by the information from Battlelog would suggest that it decreases 33% of your first shot recoil, which really wouldn't be that bad, granted the M416 doesn't really have a first shot multiplier of too much by itself. So of course I feel like this attachment wouldn't be too beneficial to the M416 considering that it doesn't have a first shot multiplier of too much by itself and there's really a large negative that comes associated with using any of the underbarrels now and that's really not really a positive thing for this weapon. So in conclusion I really can't recommend any of these attachments especially for when it comes down to what the M416 is known for and the engagements that the developers seen for this weapon. However that's not to say that this weapon is completely useless it's just especially for the engagements of what the weapon is designed for, it's not very good and it takes away from the performance at medium to long range. However, these overall attachments might not be too bad in close to medium range combat. However, I feel like you're going to be getting beat by the AEK, which is a monster, especially in close quarters combat, as well as shotguns. Since the most recent update, shotguns have become a lot more effective and very consistent, especially at close to medium range combat, which I think is a little bit difficult to try to understand from a development standpoint, especially when shotguns are beating weapons at medium range, but for the most part, shotguns are very good on the battlefield. But anyway guys, this particular case of the M416 with these attachments I really can't recommend for medium to long range combat. However, if you are trying to look for something in that particular case, then I would recommend using this weapon just in a more naked sense, especially when it comes down to it, because you're not going to be reaching those negative consequences for using attachments in this version of the game. But anyway guys, I hope you enjoyed the first episode, of course. Please consider leaving constructive feedback, especially when it comes down to how you feel like these episodes should be commenced and how they should be set up, because I didn't really have a full understanding of what I was trying to aim for at the moment, but hopefully you guys will give me a general idea. Now, of course, alongside that information, if you guys would like to name this video series, please let me know in the comments below, considering that I wasn't quite for sure what I wanted to call the series, and I didn't want to copy other people that have done stuff like this in the past. But until the next episode, guys, please leave your suggestions in the comments below for the next episode, and until then, this has been NMO, and I'm going to be signing out, guys. Peace.